Oh yeah, sexy biscuits. Nice. Long black clothes, 's give my regards to Broad Street on the Sinclair ZX Spectrum released by Argus Press Software in 1985. I have no idea what it was released on other than the Spectrum. Maybe it was just the Spectrum, not sure. My brother had this on a compilation tape as a kid. Um we we knew Paul McCartney was, I think because of what was it, the frog chorus? Obviously we were very, very young in nineteen eighty-five and you know our knowledge of the Beatles probably wasn't as profound as it is now. But yeah, we wanted to enjoy it. The whole idea that, you know, like wow, pop star. Um pop, I know, more than a pop star, but we were kids. Pop stars got a video game blew our minds. We were shit at it. Can I just apologise for the background noise? It's uh, rush hour at six o'clock in the morning and this is a 48k game only. But basically, we had no idea what you were doing. You were driving around in a very small part of the screen. So as an adult, I looked into what you actually have to do and uh, I'm amazed and not in a good way. To say this is an overambitious uh, idea for a game or a stretch is one way you could say or call it I should say, the other would be a map reading simulator. So Give My Regards to Broad Street was a movie released in 1984. I've never seen it. So Paul McCartney, Brian, Bra Brian Brown um, is the bad guy, uh, Ringo Starr and Linda McCartney and basically they lose their master tapes because Give My Regards to Broad Street was also an album which was a soundtrack to the film. The film was written by Paul McCartney. So anyway, uh, they, I don't know what, the, the bad guy, Brian Brown, nicks them or something like that so he can bootleg them. Honestly don't know. So anyway, I'm assuming I have to get them back and it's kind of a day in the life of Paul McCartney, Linda McCartney making videos and shit like that. I, maybe I'll track it down and see what it's about. But it tanked, critically and financially. For whatever reason, because this is a year later, Argus Press Software decided to license it. Now, I didn't know what you had to do as a kid, you know, or any idea and just couldn't get on with it. But apparently it came with a fuck off big map of London. And I'll try and explain what you need to do um, when we get into it. So we'll get into the game. So in the game, uh, you were supposed to take your single to, I don't know, the recording studio or something. And you've got, and it's been nicked or lost. And you've got 15 hours to re-piece it together from all the members of the band. Uh, and then take it to the, the factory to be um, reproduced. So... There I am. I don't know what controls I got. I forgot to set the controls. Give me a jiffy. Right, I'm going to go with Kempston because I have no idea what the keys are and couldn't find them online. So that, we're not even running the game yet. Six will run game. But that is essentially the game there on the screen. That tiny little blue screen in the middle is the bit that you control. You start at Abbey Road Studios. That's probably as cool as the game's going to get. And then I have no idea what those two white boxes with a slit are on either side. They're supposed to be speakers. I don't know. Uh, and that bottom in the middle is a map. It says scanner. I don't know what tech existed in 1984. But you didn't have Tom Toms uh, or sat nav, and scanners were um, well audio equipment that the, you'd used to listen to the old bill. So I know it's a game is taking you know liberties and stuff like that. So five is it five five run game. So no, that's keyboard. Do this again. Uh, I'm an umpty two. Then um, f six. Sorry. Now I try to show the ZX Spectrum in the best light, but sometimes stuff like this I've just got to show you. So anyway, your car's got a massive case of. Uh, flatulence and um, basically uh, 15 hours to re-piece together by going to find all your bandmates and stuff like that and getting a note or notes uh, off then to re-piece together the single I guess re-record it and take it to the factory to be duplicated now the game came with an absolutely huge map of London that would not just show you London even had a tube map in the bottom left hand corner would give you information so based on the fact that you see bottom left there that person is uh, in Holland Park and they're a band member. Press forward, accelerate. Right, controls are reversed, obviously. Oh, you've got energy. When you're, I'm gonna break them and go slower. When you're um, going down or up in a car. But you can see the map scrolling at the bottom. So there would be information or so I'm told or led to believe on this map will let you work out where your band members were going or lived or what stops they would get off 
on the tube. Yes, this is a game. So you would then track them down and piece together this tape or something. There's a tube stop there, you can see in the blue screen. So you would have to use this map in conjunction with the game because what you would have to do, supposedly, hey, supposedly, is work out where they're getting off and then race to them using the map at the bottom below in a scanner and then work out where you are on the actual paper map that came. This is a brilliant idea, isn't it? I mean, come on. Um, paper map that came with the game to, yeah, get, get all the stuff you need to re-record your, uh, your album. Okay, that did nothing. Because there's no one there, so Covent Garden, out. Don't know who it is, doesn't probably need to tell me. Right, so... Where it doesn't, it doesn't, oh, Queen's Park, um, up the ranges. Queen's Park tells me on the right, which is where my time is, and my score, my score's going up, even though I'm not actually doing anything. Kilburn in, doesn't look too healthy. Rock and roll, kids, rock and roll. So, am I right in thinking that this game is essentially unplayable without the map? that came with it because here's the thing I'm pretty sure I forget what the compilation was my brother had but Jeff uh, Cape Strongman was on there did I just go past Abbey Road again uh, so was I don't know some articulated lorry driving simulator and this was but this didn't come with a map because obviously they had a book that contained all the instructions for all the games. So essentially, including this in a compilation tape, then it was unplayable. That's a church, I believe. Right, there's another tube. I guess we could just try and wing it by the fact that we'll just park outside a bloody tube station. At some point, um, based on odds, someone has to come out of that tube station. But then, would you see them? How do you know you've even spotted the person that you need to see? I don't know if there are gameplays of this. I didn't look them up, um, so there probably are. But yeah, how do I know I found what I need to find? Do I see a music note? Do I see a paper note? Do I see a band member? Because I'm guessing you don't see a band, no band member because the elephant in the room right now is, I don't know where the fucking car is. It's nine o'clock, Monday morning, Tuesday morning of the week, London style and there's no other cars. So if it can't do cars, Oh, it can't do other things on the screen. So I'm guessing it's probably one of those games, by all means, correct me, correct me if I'm wrong if you played it, that can actually be completed. There are a lot of these on 8-bit systems. And not, I don't necessarily mean because they were broken or bugged, or possibly the was never even an end put in, but yeah. So how do we know? Shies and Bulls. Where anyone is? Oh, and I was gonna say, does anyone care? But apparently, the album was a success, even though the movie was not. Which brings us to this, back then. Um, pay attention, Paul. That's why people like you. Music, not movies. And just because you can write music, and bloody good music too. Also, the Beatles, the most recent shit. Uh, and all right, I didn't hate Wings. Um, but it doesn't mean you can write movies. And I like the Frog Chorus. But I was a child. I'm just going in circles, aren't I? And what car am I in? And where's the bird this feather came from? So basically, I'd imagine even if you had the map, it would still be difficult to work out exactly where you, well, apart from the start, you'd obviously use the location Abbey Road to go onto the map and go, I am Shah. But then having said that, these clues that it's given me in the bottom left hand corner of the screen, you know, um, basically a bad green picture of someone who looks like Madonna from Material Girl. Um, hey, it is 84, I know, I don't know who he is. Yeah, it's, it's not really lending me, oh, of course. I know exactly where he is and I know exactly what to look for to pick up to inch my way forward in completing this game. Now, apparently you don't have petrol, that's probably a good thing. I'm just going, right, it's bad because you have to look at the bottom of the screen to have any semblance and not going around in circles, which I'm about to do, I understand the irony there. But also, you've got to keep, keep looking up to make sure you don't twat stuff, because I'm assuming at some point, eek, it will kill me. Um, and look, there's the edge of London. That, as in, that's it. Nothing else exists outside. It's like the edge of the universe. So, even just navigating it, you know, without having to look at a map simultaneously, because there is no pause, as far as I know, in this. Let's press P. Nope, there's no pause. So, just stopping your car, 
this is probably why there's no petrol. Just stop in your car so you can look at the map, try and work out where you are then, to try and work out where you're going, which is quite frankly fucking impossible. Um, your clock's still ticking down, so, look, it's not going in real time, obviously, but you get 15 hours, and I've just been pissing around. Oh, look at this. Oh, how accurate the in-game map is to the London map. That would be somewhat impressive, actually. But it's a 48k spectrum, so I sincerely doubt it. Um, but... Yeah, I just... I, I don't know. And also... I don't know how many kids' dads bought this because they were fans of the Beatles or stuff like that, or to a less degree Wings, whom I didn't hate. But... Why did they think kids would want to play this game? Because kids were the biggest market for games on the ZX Spectrum. And then they decided to check this out. The kids. Kids love that. Paul McCartney. Especially Ringo Starr, even though this is the past and not the future, where he refuses to sign autographs with people and has become an arrogant dickhead. But, um, yeah, people love him as well. And also people love Lynn McCartney, even though she's not yet invented an amazing range of vegetarian food. And even though I'm a carnivore, I like her mozzarella burgers. I just thought you should know. I don't know. I'm going to go back in a, a UE because I want to go to that massive diagonal. And also, if I do accelerate and it makes it difficult to, you know, turn around, I still have a, a limited top speed. All right, let's keep going this way. And then, oh, hey! So I'm going to try and navigate from that little map at the bottom. The fact that there's two different things going on at the same time in the same screen for 1985 is impressive. Actually, no, it's not. Look at the stuff Ultimate Play the Game we're doing then. This is three years into the Spectrum's life. So, so I know where all the tube stations are, even though it doesn't name them. So that's a bit shit as well. You, that, again, you've got to work out from your actual map. So this is what I mean. Hey, kids, let's have fun reading a map of London. Unless you lived in London. Oh, what's that? What bridge am I on? Unless you lived in London, um, and therefore it's some level of relevance for you. Who fucking cares? Who fucking cares? Like I said, I had to show this game just because it's just one of the more like... Why does this... Well, why did this exist? And I'm pretty sure the game tanked. But don't take my word for it. Look it up. Because I, as in honesty, I don't know. I'm, when I say pretty sure, I've got no clue. But I'm going to guess. Because even if it's an early Spectrum game, I just come past that. People are probably going to review this and go, it's shit. You have to read a map. And also, the compilation version doesn't come with a map which ultimately makes it unplayable, even though you could argue it was more than unplayable in the first place. Am I being harsh? Possibly. If you played this and you completed it and somehow love it, by all means, correct me. But yeah, I just think it's, again, have to, had to show it to you because as an idea, it's just like, Pow! but yeah, it's just it's just a stupid idea. Look, look at this massive long strap. I like this row. Oh no. Yes, I do. It keeps going. No. Right, so yeah, so even though we don't, hey, it's Ringo, give me your autograph, Ringo, and don't do that stupid peace sign thing you do with your fingers that gets on everyone's tits. Um, although I did like the band The Travelling Wilburys, but that wasn't your band, though, was it? Um, that was him in it, wasn't it? George Harrison, wasn't it? I don't know. But yeah, so even just pissing around mindlessly, randomly like this, surely at some point odds would determine I must have gone by, or, or should have gone by, someone who's going to help me write the song. Because even though I'm Paul McCartney, one of the greatest, you know, songwriters of all time, apparently my memory's shite and I can't remember it. There you go. So, yeah, just a bit of fun to show you one of the more obscure and out there and ambitious but ultimately broken games. Um, unless you like reading maps, then I'm, I'm guessing it's a fucking wet dream. On the ZX Spectrum. As always, I love... Hey, I've just done basically one big figure of eight Scaletrics track for the entire, you know, commentary of this video. Um, but yeah, I'd love to know what you think. And like I said, you know, if I'm completely utterly wrong by this game, by all means, rip me a new one. I suspect I am not. And also, what was it on anything else? I couldn't be asked to Wikipedia it. Um, and thank you very much for watching, persevering, tolerating, again, unless you enjoy maps or skeletrics. And uh, I'll see you later.